everybody welcome to the Waldock way I'm Jessica and today's video is going to be a look inside my planner setup for the 2021 2022 school year now before I show you inside I just want to take you through some of the basics the first thing is that the covers are printed on 110 pound cardstock and then laminated so all I did was print it on cardstock laminate it and then I used the pro click to bind it. Now with the ProClick, why it's my favorite is because the spines open up and then can be closed again. So almost like a three ring binder. So I kind of get the benefit of being able to add and remove pages as well as the benefits of it being spiral binded. So that is why I use the ProClick. Now for the pages inside, it is printed on a 28 pound paper, mainly because I wanted to be able to print front and back and it not bleed through because being able to print front and back means I can put double the pages in one of these spines. All right, so now let's take a look. I haven't filled anything out yet because I didn't wanna have to cover and not show you everything. So this way you'll be able to see the whole planner. So the very first page is my favorite quote, which is education is not the filling of a pail but the lighting of a fire. I like that to be the first thing I see to remind me. After that, I have the year at a glance. And then I have our goals for the 2021, 2022 school year. Now these are our math and language arts goals. The way I make those is I'm going to be using my grade level skills checklist, which you can download this for free if you haven't yet. I'll put a link in the description box. And I've already gone through third grade and highlighted things that I feel like she didn't master, as well as the fourth grade list. And you can see language is the top half. There's not as many on the fourth grade list as math. So I also went ahead and went to fifth grade and chose a few from fifth grade as well. So all I need to do now is take all of these things that I highlighted for math and language arts and transfer them over so that they will be in my planner for the year. The next thing I keep is a passwords page. I keep this because we do a lot of online um, type of learning, but I do everything here. So my personal passwords, my business passwords, homeschool passwords, I'll just write the website, the username, and the password. That way I have a record of it, I don't lose it, and if Emily or Kevin needs to access something, they can look at it here too. On the back of that, I have my contacts page. I like to keep um, names, phone numbers, and addresses for friends and family members especially when we are doing mail time Monday so that we can send cards, which is why birthdays and anniversaries is the next page because this way I can say, okay, we're sitting down in August to do a mail time Monday. Here's everybody we know that has a birthday. And then it's super easy for me to look right here and go ahead and fill out their card well, or for Emily. And then each one of these dividing like pages that I made is also printed on a 110 pound cardstock. It's just not laminated. It just makes it kind of easier to find in the planner. So next up, I have my records pages, which is the attendance record. I don't legally have to keep this, but I just kind of like keeping it, knowing at the end how many days we've done, and just in case Florida ever changes their laws, well, I'm ahead of the game. On the back of that is the curriculum checklist. The only thing that I know that we are more than likely doing that has lessons that we will more than likely follow is teaching textbooks. So what I will do is I will write um, a one through, I believe it's 119, and then I just check them, you know, or highlight them or cross them off as we go. But if you're using structure curriculum, this is a great way to plan in a kind of easy format to see it over, like, over the whole year and see what you've completed. Next up, I have the book log on the front and then the game log on the back. Now, I only put one of these in here, but I will definitely need to add more of those. Luckily, the binding opens, so I can do that. Resource log. What I do for the resource log is I will take, let's say I'm planning, and the first thing on her skills checklist is know the meanings of simile, metaphor, alliteration, and automatopoeia. I would write that up here for the subject or concept, and then I'd write books, games, and hands-on resources that I have to cover that subject. So I kind of know everything that I have for that skill, and so I can work through it. So that is how I will plan versus having a full curriculum for that kind of thing. And I have a couple of those in here 
for now, and then I always can add more as we work through our goals. Next up, I have the unit study planner where I can list out the books, websites and videos and games and activities that we're going to use for a unit study. Again, I have a handful of those in here, but I can add more as we get there. Each month is set up exactly the same. So the first date or the month name has another 110 pound cardstock page. And then I have the blank month. The planner comes undated, so you never have to purchase it again. And I'll just write the dates in. On the back of the month, I have an ideas, plans, and goals page. What I use this for is I will use different boxes for different things, but I use it to fill out um, things that I see that are happening around town that I might want to go to, but I don't know for sure yet. So let's say you see one of those things on Facebook that's like a homeschool day. You're like, oh, that sounds fun, but you don't know if you can commit. I have a section for that that I write down like what's happening around town. I'll write down things for homeschool. I'll write down like our personal life, my business, just all the ideas and plans and goals that I have for that month just kind of land here. And then I have our August morning basket and August bedtime basket. Now, technically our bedtime basket does not change monthly. Um, I'm not even sure our morning basket is going to change monthly this year. We're trying something a little different. I'll let you guys know about that soon in our fall homeschool plans. But whatever we, is in the basket at the time, I'll just fill in so I have a record of it. And then this is the planning pages that I'm using. Now, these are new this year. They've been added to all of the planners. So if you have purchased in the past and you want this one, you'll just need to re-download to get it. I like being able to write what week of school we're on. So like week one fill out whatever we have going on that week in life and homeschool. We have a doctor's appointment on Monday. We have gymnastics on Tuesday. We have a field trip on Friday or whatever, but to be able to see it at a glance. And then I have like a section for math, a section for language arts, a section for unit study, and then a to-do section. And this would be my to-dos, whatever I need to do for homeschool, for my personal life, for business, whatever needs to get done that week will be written here. So it's just a really easy way to look at the week. Now, if this is not your choice for weekly lesson planning, there are five other layouts. So you're not stuck with just this one. If you download the planner, this is just the one I really like. And then on the back of each weekly lesson planner, I have the meal plan. So that each week I have the week at a glance and then what we're eating for that week. So breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, and then my shopping list. It just makes it really, really easy to say, okay, what do we want to eat? Write it down. I can say what we have going on that week, whether we'll be eating out, eating at the house. It just makes it really easy. And like I said, every week is set up in that same way with the lesson planner on the front, the meal plan on the back, and then the next month again is printed on cardstock to divide it. So it just repeats. through the whole year. The very last thing I have in the back is a book list and it is the printed book list from Read Aloud Revival, which is the picture books for each month of the year. I find that these are picture books that we typically really, really love and it makes it easy when I flip to January to go, okay, let me go ahead and place a hold for January's books or let me go ahead and place a hold for, you know, March's books. And even if I don't have like my homeschool planning or my mindset right, I can at the very least place a hold for these books and know that we're going to read some great literature that month. So that's why I keep that in there. And then we just have the back cover. And there you have it. That is my 2021-2022 homeschool planner.